Hello everybody, welcome back to the world of me. My name's Cougar and this is another episode from our Amazon review series. Uh, we've got a, another product in today, a, uh, an actual fishing product here. And uh, as you can see here, this is a wireless fish finder. Uh, now this is by Lucky and uh, I don't know if that means they're lucky if you find a fish or not. But uh, all right guys, so here we go. We've got a handful of products right here and uh, uh, well, pieces, I should say. And, uh, of course, you have your two main units. You have your handheld unit here, and you have your uh, your sonar, your float. Uh, let's go ahead and go through all the smaller pieces. Uh, we've got uh, the instructions here. They're in English as well as um, something else. I'm not quite sure which, which language this one is. We have the what should be the neck strap. And... Uh, it is just a uh, basically a kind of a standard nylon neck strap. It has a uh, a little cord there to tie it to the unit, and then you can do the quick clasp to uh, take it off there, and uh, you know snap it back on so you don't lose the unit. Uh, we have the charger, which uses a micro USB. So of course, you know, for many phones, that's what you use. You can of course use this, uh, or you can use uh, maybe your phone charger to charge it, and that goes not only with the handheld unit, but also with the uh, float there, with the sonar. Uh, now it does have a uh, a second cap here, which I, uh, is I believe this piece right here. Uh, that is for I think uh, I think and that's where the buttons and everything are so we would take a look and uh, Underneath here once we get to looking at it. I'm sure that's uh, what that's for but you have a second one That's uh, clear. So maybe you can see whatever's going on inside there uh, They did give us two different chargers They did give us a wall charger a standard US wall charger as well as a uh, car charger and this is a very low profile uh, USB car charger. Uh, now something else they did give us was these uh, these little uh, snaps here. Uh, they do have a simple little snap there and then they have this little kind of uh, it's a little bit different than a standard ring would be. It has uh, yellow on one side and black on the other. I don't know if that's uh, something specific. It doesn't really turn but I, if you're just fishing a line through there the the line's just going to pivot around inside of there anyhow. And then of course there is the f the float and the handheld again. Uh, take a look at the float here. We'll unscrew the top. And it does have a water seal there. Uh, the top right there is easy to get on and off. It has kind of that screwdriver kind of uh, slot there that is big enough for something like a quarter uh, or some type of coin uh, to be able to get in there and pull that out. There is, uh, looks like there's a couple of LEDs inside there as well as looks like the little, the white piece would be the USB cover. And uh, then we got two other little plastic things here. Um, oh, buttons. Um, and I'm guessing, okay, well it looks like this one, this one maybe for it to be turned on as it has that flashing blue light there. So, uh, there's that one, and then, what's the other one do? Oh, and there we go. Uh, then you have the LEDs at the bottom. Now, these LEDs, uh, they do help to see where the float is if you are fishing at night, but uh, also this is uh, supposed to be kind of a fish attractant. Now, uh, it does have these two little, uh, like, probe things, like right here, and that's what I believe they are, are probes. Uh, this is supposed to tell you the water uh, temperature, though I don't know how accurate it was. Um, the one thing I did notice on the site is that people did complain that it wasn't really great on the water temperature as to uh, figuring out how warm it was. Uh, you know, they had problems where if it was in the sun or something like that, it would register really, really high. So, uh, you know, it's definitely something to take into consideration. Also, uh, as I understand, it's only going to measure basically surface temperature. And then we've got the handheld unit. Now, the handheld unit, of course, has a few little things to it. It does have the little lanyard uh, loop right there uh, at the bottom. There's also the little rubber piece that will keep your uh, Bluetooth connection there uh, from getting wet. 
and of course that is where you charge it from. You then have a opening at the top for a connector and uh, there is a corded version of this if I remember correctly which it actually goes deeper than this one. This one goes to I believe it was 147 feet. Uh, then we've got a little red thing here. Oh, okay. A very, very thin antenna, which is uh, rather interesting. But of course, with this floating around in the water, you're going to want as much signal as possible because if a wave comes up that's a little bit high, uh, that can block the signal and everything. So that's, uh, that's a nice thing there. And then on the front, it does have the uh, four buttons here. It looks like directional buttons and then a couple of uh, maybe menu or selection buttons of some type. Okay, it looks like the bottom one is the, uh, the power button, it looks like. Uh, there is a startup and a simulation uh, version here. So, of course, startup is going to be what you use when you go to use it uh, out to fish, and the simulation may give you a, a general idea on what it does. Let's uh, let's try the simulation. Oh, there we go. So here we go. This is what it's looking like. It's given us a color feed here, showing us what um, what the bottom might look like. It's telling us the uh, degrees in Fahrenheit, and uh, you can of course change that to Celsius. You can see there's some little fish coming across there. Uh, so the depth gauge is on the right hand side here. And uh, a little bit hard to read, but uh, gives you a general idea. Shows you different variations in the bottom. Uh, now the fish here, this is kind of cool, is the fish here, there is a number. And uh, they do have, uh, that number does seem to be kind of the depth that they're at. And also the fish, they have kind of a general size. It looks like there's a, there's a small, medium, and large uh, size that kind of shows up on here. Now, of course, this is a very small screen. This is, I think, uh, like a 2.8 inch screen um, that's on this. So, uh, you know, it's not real big, but for a handheld unit, that's, that's not bad. Uh, now, at the top here, we do have uh, three kind of, three or four kind of readouts here. Uh, one of them looks kind of like your standard uh, icon for a um, for a uh, wireless signal, say like on a cell phone or something like that. Uh, you have uh, what looks like the vol it's the voltage meter over here and it says that it is at 4.2 volts which I guess is a full charge. So you can sit there and check the voltage and make sure that uh, you've got charge on this and that it'll last. Uh, then we have um, one over on the side here with an S and as I understand it, I believe that would probably be the sensitivity meter. Uh, the sensitivity meter, uh, of course, you can turn it up or down uh, depending on water depth and uh, what you're looking for. If it's really sensitive, you're probably going to see those small fish really easy, even like the little minnows. Uh, if it is less sensitive, uh, you're going to wait until you see a much bigger fish, depending on how, how far up or down you have it turned. Uh, and then I'm sure that's also going to adjust what you see on the bottom there for uh, what the um, you know the depth of the bottom and then maybe what the what the bottom is made of. I'm sure these colors kind of give you a variation as to what that is. Okay, everybody, you can see we've got our uh, little sensor ball there. You can hear the uh, I already have the hand unit on. We're out at a local dam here so we're out of the water and uh, we're gonna go ahead and pitch this now one thing I decided since we're static I'm putting these weights on it and I have it so they'll slide um, down the line and what will happen is they'll hit the bottom and the bobber or the uh, the unit will float straight up from there and then all you have to do is keep just a little bit of tension on the line and it will uh, hold it in place. Uh, this is kind of actually an old depth finders thing from uh, from Europe. That's how they would find the depth is then they would measure the line out once the uh, you know, normally you would sink the bobber. We're not worrying about sinking it so we just want to keep it in place. But uh, but anyhow here it goes. We'll take toss this out. We'll get out here in the water good ways 
and then uh, we'll take a look at uh, what we see, how many fish and everything. And uh, let's go ahead and turn the scanner on and pull the little antenna out. But I don't think we really need it. I don't think it's out so far that we need it. Uh, we're in the uh, startup mode. Let it go for a second and then try to get this down in the shade so you guys can see it. There we go. Somewhat. I mean, that's about the best we've got right now. Um, and you heard the beeps. Those were some fish that came across. There we go. There's some fish right there. And they're uh, towards the bottom. Um, right now, the setting is for medium and large fish. We're not worried about little bait fish or anything like that. So uh, it is telling us a little bit uh, of information, telling us, you know, again, water depth and everything, of which the water depth here um, and what it's telling us should be about right for where it's at compared to the dam right there. Uh, so, yeah, I think it works relatively well. But uh, at least we're getting the, uh, the fish in there. We're getting the bottom and the depth and everything. So looks like it should be pretty nice. You can see that string of fish there.